with all myself. Coach Borino with you, so this is the second welcome to you guys. What I wanted to show you, one of the things I want to talk to you about is this little thing. Check that out. It's a new magical device that you simply put on your head and it will generate one million leads within an hour. It's amazing. And you can have it for $100,000. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I want to tell you, show you what that means. If you have questions, post them right here. I'm here to answer them. I want to make sure that I cover as much as we can. We usually stay for about an hour or so. And with that, warm welcome to everybody, especially if this is your first time here on Rockstar, first time doing a live with me. I'm glad you're here. Ask questions. The entire group and my job is to help you, to support you, to give you the tools, to give you the answers, to give you the inspiration, to give you the push that we all sometimes need so that you rock it. You get more leads, you list more properties, you help more people, and you're happy. You're making money. Life is good, which you can, and you should. And I'm here to help. So whatever is on your mind, just ask. I'm going to show some comments and show some questions. We're going to get in. Hey, Christina. Hello to you back to Yaka Valley. All right, Andy's here. All right. Okay, good. So the sound is good. You guys can, can hear me. Let me just maximize the screen because one of the things I like to do as we do this is to share your comments, show what's on your mind. Good. All right. So the sound is good and we can get started. So let me start with this device and why I wanted to show you. You guys see this? All right. Anybody wants to guess what this is? Any guesses? No, no guesses? I won't let you guess. I will tell you. Uh, we live uh, in a community, we have a lovely lake not far from here called the Lake Barcroft. And my son had an idea about two, or two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that he's going to build a remote controlled boat. But instead of going to the shop and getting in you know, one of those pre-built made ones, he decided, because it's really handy, not after me, trust me, <laughs> you know, two left hands, but he's really good at it. So rather than getting a kit, he decided to build it himself. So he put together this kind of a wooden boat, this little thing, you know, from wood, and put a little motor and a propeller on the back. And it was a, one of those lovely days, you know, recently we had a really nice weather here. So we went to the lake. And the boat was about this big. We put it in the water and it started kind of going in circles. He tried to steer it. It is a little remote kit that he put together. And it was going in circles. It was starting taking water. He grabbed it out of the water, tried to kind of adjust it, tweak it a little, put it back in the water. It didn't work very well. And he was getting really frustrated. And he was getting pissed. We went back. He built a second one. The second one was pretty cool because he used water bottles. It was kind of like a mini pontoon boat. And he had a little dome on top to protect it from the elements, from the water to get in there. And that one worked better. But it still was kind of slow. It was very hard to steer and very hard to maneuver. And he was really getting pissed. Like, I don't know how to do this and it sucks and I hate the project. Then we had a little chat. And what we discussed and what I, my guidance was is Take this as an opportunity to have fun, number one, to learn something and to make the next one better. Because the first one is impossible to get right. I mean, a 13-year-old boy built a boat that actually functioned, didn't sink, and you can control it remotely. To me, that was pretty amazing. But it wasn't good enough for him. You know what I mean? He was still wanted more. So I said, dude, there are a lot of things that already worked on the first one. You got even better with the second one. Watch what you can do with the third one. And may I present to you the third one? This is a not finished, of course. The motor is here. The controls will go here. But look, that's pretty cool, right? And let me tell you something. The fourth one will be even better. But what I try to explain to him is it's a process. Just like engineers when they test rockets. When uh, Elon Musk shot that beautiful car into the space, that wasn't the first rocket they fired off. They fired the first one, second one. Some of them fucked up. Some of them blew up. Some of them never came back. Even this one had a trouble. You know, one of those pieces that came back to Earth, which to me was pretty amazing. If you've seen it, how those two rockets just landed perfectly. There still was a glitch where one clipped something. So it's not going to be perfect for a while. And then he got it. I said, enjoy the process of learning, exploring, testing, trying, going back. This worked, this didn't. Let's, let's adjust. Let's fix. And he got it. Now he's having a good time. And now he's already thinking, building this one, thinking the next version and the next. But the process has become enjoyable because he can look back and say, well, that one sucked, that one sucked less. This has been my journey 
in real estate and in life in general. Whatever I pick up at first, whatever I attempt to do, whether it's uh, writing or music or real estate or business or technology, I suck at it first. I'm not one of those people that grab something and they're perfect at it. Hardly anybody is. You probably aren't either, and that's okay. Because the process is horrible, suck, suck less, a little better, not so bad, pretty good, 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 even better, even better, and sometimes I hit mastery if I stay with it. But it is always a process, just like building these boats for my son, it's a process. Now I have a question for you. Have you tried contacting an expired listing? You called or you visited, and then the person was not super nice to you, or you didn't say the right thing, you didn't get a listing on your first try, and you go, well, fuck it. Expires don't work. Fizzbows suck. I'm no good at it. I got to try something else. Has that ever happened to you? Like, you don't give yourself a chance to fail. You don't give yourself an opportunity to figure out this worked, this didn't. I got to do more of this and I got to do less of that. You don't stay with it long enough to understand that all of this stuff that you're learning, everything, Everything about this business is a skill that you need to learn, you need to practice, you need to improve, and then master. But it doesn't happen in a week. It doesn't happen overnight. That's bullshit. And whoever's telling you that you can is lying to you, is misleading for one of two reasons. Because they want to try to sell you something, some new magic sauce, or they've never done it themselves. They have no idea what they're talking about. So the reason I wanted to show you this is to encourage you that if you're in the process, whether you're here, you're in the middle, or you're getting close to the master, you got to stay with it. Now, not just blindly going and hitting the wall, obviously. That'd be stupid. I've done that plenty in my life, but I don't recommend it. What I am talking about is that process where you give it a little time and you evaluate. This worked. This I need to fix. This sucked. And then you make a correction. You add a new part to it. You add a better motor, or you add a better engine, or you say, this needs better batteries, so I have more power, so I can move faster. And then you do it, and then you try again, and then you do it, you try again, and you get better and better and better. You know where most people fail? At the beginning of that process. When my son, since we're talking about my son, did Taekwondo. He doesn't now, he has other interests, but when he did, I was talking to his coach. They don't call him coach. They call him master of Zen Tzu, <laughs> Daniel Sun. <laughs> no, wrong person. And he says, you know, when most people quit Taekwondo, there's a beginner belt, which is white, and you progress all the way to the black. And I was figuring, probably the black belt must be the toughest one. I've never done martial arts. And he says, no. Most people quit between the first and the second, between the white belt and the yellow belt. So if you're there, if you're out there, if you're hustling, if you're trying, if you're doing your thing, prospecting, working, following up, marketing, and you're not getting the perfect result you're after, the first thing I would evaluate is how long have you been at it and what are you learning in the process? How are you working on the steps? And when will you quit? When do you give up? You shouldn't. Think about it this way. Everything is a learned skill. How you communicate is a learned skill. I'm a living proof of that. I really have no special talents or abilities other than teaching you how to do this stuff. I've developed that. But even that was a skill I developed where I learned how to communicate with you, how to inspire you, how to give you the tools and answers you need. So how you communicate is a skill. How you learn the market, you learn the business, is a skill. How you do listing presentation is a skill. How you prospect on the phone, how you text, how you follow up, how you negotiate offers, all just a set of skills. So if it does feel overwhelmed, just break it down. Break it down into simple chunks that you can take. Like this boat is just a simple piece of parts put together. This can be your success. You just need to put the right parts in the right place, and if it doesn't work and it sinks, which sometimes it will happen, it's unavoidable, it's inevitable. Unavoidable absolute essential part of this business life in general. You simply take a look at it and say, okay, this one, trash. Replace. Try again. Because I promise you, my son will stay with it. He's having fun and he's really good at it. One day, this will be a really cool boat, doing some cool stuff. 
just like your business and your life can be really cool doing some cool stuff. All it takes at times is the right guidance, resources, you have plenty of those, and patience, staying with it. Does that make sense, guys? Is that helpful? Yes? All right, let's see what you guys say. Let's show your comments. Here you go. What's up, my good people? All right. Let me just adjust it real quick. Bear with me. Here you go. Hey, Ricky, what's happening? Nice to have you. Totally, you got to just keep pushing. People give up too soon. They really, really do. Cherie, Derek, I was just writing an email about you and your amazing success. We should do a little chat sometime. Yeah, that's a packaging material. You're right. Hey, what's up, Mr. Jim Steely? Let me zoom out just a little. All right. Mr. Jason, I answered your question, so check your I am. That was a really good question. All right. Oh, Mita noticed I have a different shirt color. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad you noticed. Fantastic. All right. Good. Can't wait you to meet in San Jose in three weeks. Yes, we are going. That's right. Thanks for the reminder. We are going to San Jose. We're going to see Tony Robbins, small group of us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got this VIP sitting not far from Tony. We're going to be able to see him hang out for four days. I'm looking forward to For those of you who are coming, let me know if you're coming. We're going to hang out and enjoy and learn and get inspired. My wife Hannah and I will be there. I'm really looking forward to it. So that's going to be cool. I don't know if the, there are still more tickets. Uh, you can post and Stephen will jump in, I'm sure, and he will let us know, give us a quick update. All right. Iris needs an advice. That's why we're here for so looking forward to Kara. Glad you're going to be there. Aloha, Mr. Patrick Adams. How are things in beautiful Las Vegas? All right. Iris has a good question. Need advice. No money, and it seems everything I need to do to be successful requires it. Any advice? All right. Todd will be there. Excellent. Iris, that's a really good point, and you're right. Let me just start by saying this. I was broke and things were challenging. It was hard. I was homeless and it was hard. It sucked. Now, thank God, we're doing all right. I have money. And things are still hard. I was up at 5.20 this morning working my ass off, putting together the book you're going to get if you're a member of my Path Coaching, The Referrals Plus. I'm writing up one more chapter, then we're done going to print. You're going to get it in a few weeks. I'm really excited about that. Things will always be challenging. Things will be hard. But I do admit, and I have to tell you, there are two things that will stress you out more than anything. Three, really. One is worries about your health. Two, stress over relationships when you have trouble at home. And three, money problems. Money problems. Because there were times in my life, not that long ago, where I would wake up in the middle of the night, worried about money, stress over how I'm going to pay rent this month. I'm going to buy enough food this month. So I totally can relate. I totally understand. So let me give you a real quick emergency plan that helped me get on my feet, get it together, and get going. Yeah? Would you like that? If you struggle financially, this will help you. It is not a magic answer. I don't have magic answers. You know I teach common sense. But here's what I can tell you. One, make a decision that you had enough that there will never be money problems ever again. You want to live in abundance. And to buy into that, to believe that you can and you could and you should and you deserved it and you earned it is the toughest part. Because the reason I became homeless, the reason I was broke, had very little to do with me being a real estate agent or doing certain things. I was prospecting. I was working. I was doing all that stuff you're told to do. The issue was in my head. Why do you think I wrote a book on real estate mindset? Why do you think it's the first chapter we deal with during the path coaching? It is the most essential, important element. Because if your mindset is not in the right place, none of that rest of it doesn't matter. The tools you're using don't matter. How you prospect, the hours you work, your personality, none of that matters. you got to get your head straight first. So for those of you who are not financially where you really like to be, 
Mindset first. You saw my post about Warren Buffett. Graduated from Columbia, super smart guy, $43 billion worth. And the dude has a diploma in his office from Carnegie Mellon for personal improvement from Carnegie. No, sorry, not Carnegie Mellon. Dale Carnegie, personal development diploma he received. It is the most essential. Even he will tell you one of the books he read more often than any other is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Suddenly, it is on the reading list of the past students. Suddenly, past students do pretty well. Why do you think the connection is there? Of course, mindset. So you've got to get your head straight. You've got to get your mindset aligned with your goals and your desires. If there's a conflict between what you want and what you believe you deserve and earn, the subconscious programming will, work, will win every single time. That's why I encourage you guys who are my past students and everybody, do a vision board. Make very specific roadmap. Put together a roadmap. How do I get there? What is it that I'm after? How much money do I need? This is something I had to clean up first because the rest was just a joke. I lived in a freaking car because of my mindset. So one, shift your mindset. Two, make a decision. Might as well write these down. You guys want to write them on the board? All right. So let, let me write these down. Here we go. So number one, mindset. Spend a little time about really analyzing what's holding you back. What's really going on? Mindset one. Two, decide. Enough. Enough. Decide. Now is the time. I'm going to change everything. This is the day when things will turn around. Three, make a simple plan. I have that two-part coaching. If you haven't done it, do take it with me. Well, I'll walk you through it. We'll break it down exactly. What is it that you're after? Why it matters to you? How are you going to get there? And if you haven't done it in about 60, maybe 90 days, do it again. Check it out again. So make a plan. Four, create an emergency action. Now, here's what I mean by that. You're absolutely right that in real estate, any business really, you need some money to run your business. I mean, I don't want my dentist to be broke and desperate. I don't want my lawyer to have a part-time job. You know what I mean? All these professionals, I want them to do well. Wealth attracts wealth. If you're poor, piss, broke, you're going to attract poor, piss, broke clients. That's just how it works. So what I did was I understood you're going to need money for lockboxes, for signs, for MLS dues, for gas, for advertising, for all these little silly things like business cards and all that stuff. It's going to cost some money to run this business. The income potential is, is, is amazing. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it's going to cost you some money to run that business. So what I did was got a part-time night job. I was a bartender, started about 7 o'clock, worked till about midnight or so. That was my plan. That was my emergency action. And it generated enough revenue for me to pay the bills, pay my rent, have enough cash to buy food, <laughs> you know, and gas for my big Cadillac guzzler, and grow my real estate business. So during the day I would work, I would work my ass off, and at night I would do my night job. Make sure you alleviate the money problems. Because if you're constantly worried about where your next rent is coming from, how are you going to afford these flyers, and more importantly, how are you going to invest in your education? Because that's what your competition is doing. And they have enough money to pay for tools like uh, Espresso Agent and Lion Desk and CRM and all that stuff that costs money, the membership and the fees. You will lose business, not because you're not a good agent. You may be the nicest agent, more friendly, as cool. But they're going to get it because they're available and they have the resources and tools. So you start working expired. Another agent in your area who has access to espresso is going to kill you. Not because they're better at expires. They just have better tools because they have more resources. So create an emergency action plan. How do you alleviate these money problems? And there are resources, there are tools. None of this is permanent. Even if you're in the biggest shithole you've ever been, even if things look really gloomy and dark, everything can be turned around. Everything can be changed. This business is, as I've discovered, and you will probably confirm, is on a 90-day cycle. It's all a 90-day cycle. That means where you are today. So here is a timeline. We are here. That's today. Where you are today, in terms of your business, your mindset, your money, and all that combined, the quality of your life, is a result of your thoughts, actions, and beliefs about 90 days ago. That's the result. So where are you going to be to, from today, 90 days from now? 
depends on your thoughts, beliefs, actions, focus, your expectations you have today. And as a result, of course, the actions you're taking as a result of those expectations and beliefs. Now, will you be living the, in the lap of luxury 90 days from now? No, but you can definitely be a lot better off, way on your way to get listings and leads and making money and feeling better. Incorporate those things I just had on the board and they start shifting, but not without mindset. It's funny how we talk about tools and resources and lead generation and I answer all these questions and at the end it always goes back to the mindset. It is such a vital, such an important element that just must be part of your success. It's impossible without it. Cheers. This is lemonade, by the way, lemon water. If you're curious, I know I mentioned it last time, I just got off the lemon cleanse. Any of you do that? Now, I'm not giving any medical advice by any means. I, I, I'm, I'm no expert in any of that. But Hannah and I, once in a while, do a cleanse where we do nothing but drink uh, lemon water with maple syrup for 11 days. We did the two day ease in, then 11 days cleanse, where you don't eat any food, don't drink anything other than herbal tea, and drink the lemon cleanse liquid, and now we're on the ease out. It was pretty cool. I lost some weight, I cleaned up, I feel better, you know, I stopped drinking stuff that, other than the lemon stuff, you know. So it was pretty cool. But I do it for a couple of reasons. One, of course, is the health benefits are really good. You know, I had to trim down, and now I have a plan. Mm, I have a plan. I hired a coach. As you guys know, I started working out, going back to the gym to maintain a better, better weight. But I also do it for psychological reasons. I use it as an exercise in discipline. There are a couple of things I like to do just to keep my discipline in check. See, I don't want to get complacent. Now that things, thank God, are going well and the business is doing well and life is good, sometimes we tend to be a little complacent and lazy. So I want make sure that my discipline is still sharp, that I can go for 13, 14 days without any food whatsoever and feel good and still teach you and work and do all that stuff. Another thing I like to do is when I'm in the sauna, I go to this uh, beautiful Korean, little Korean place not far from here that's like a nice sauna. They have a sauna and massage and all that. And they have the ice dip. So you go to a hot sauna for 15, 20 minutes, sweat really nice, nice and hot, and then boom, right into the ice cold water. It's about 41, 42 degrees, really cold. I've been doing this for, I don't know, 40 years or so, since I was a kid. It never gets easy. It never gets easy. I'm never at that point where like, gee, I've been doing this for 40 years, let's just go in. No, I always get my freaking drunken monkey going crazy, trying to talk me out of it, why it's a bad idea, why I'm gonna die. But I still do it. Not only because it's good for me and it's a healthy thing to do after a sauna, but also, at least I think, again, I'm not a doctor. But I do it to make sure I'm still in control of my drunken monkey, my willpower, and my discipline. And I am. I don't chicken out. It's not easy, but I still do it. And the reason I want you to do things that you must do is because you want to develop that muscle where you know, this is good for my business. I must do this and it doesn't matter how I feel about it and what my monkey is chatting about, I'm going to get that shit done. It's a very, very important element of your success, having that muscle, that discipline muscle to just look at the task and get the fucking thing done. So important. And for those of you who are crushing it, be honest, there are days where real estate sucks. There are days where prospecting is no good because you've made million calls and nobody answered. Because you knocked on 20 doors and nobody was there because that expired was really rude to you. And that FISBO sold on their own and your buyer backed out and the seller listed with somebody else and it sucks. And yet you dust yourself off, you, post you reset your posture, recompose yourself and you go at it again. See, the difference between the total rock stars doing hundreds of thousands of dollars, getting listings, driving nice cars, living in beautiful neighborhoods, and those who struggle is very often not the fact that they get knocked down. We all get knocked down. Everyone gets knocked down. Nobody got this perfect. But the difference is those rock stars bounce back a lot faster. They get back in the game. Take Jessica. Jessica Stone, one of my good friends, FC Tucker rock star, beautiful agent, phenomenal real estate successful agent. Jessica, I don't know if you're on a broadcast here or not, but she posts once in a while, she has a shitty day. Things go bad, deals fall apart. She, she hits slow, slow times, roughs. She is able to jumpstart it back again. 
you being able to develop that tenacity, that flexibility, that resilience that pushes you right back. Where your goal, and this is really my secret, what helps me bounce back when shit just hits the fan. I had a major computer failure last night. For some reason, we lost power for about five minutes. Now, I have redundant backups and systems in place. Things still got fucked. I was angry because I spent a lot of time working on a project, and I had to redo a lot of that stuff. I could have sat there, moped. I could have gone watch TV, be all pissed off, do other stuff. I went back, and I got shit done. I still have to work on it. It's not automatic, just like jumping in that water in the sauna is not automatic, you know what I'm saying? But I work on it. It's just like a muscle. If you keep working on it, you're going to get better, stronger. You're going to be more resilient. And once you do become resilient, you can be unstoppable. Because not many people have that, and very few real estate agents have it. If you have it, and I'll tell you what my secret is, having big goals, having incredible dreams, dreaming about vacations, income property, serving clients, being charitable, having plenty in the bank, taking care of my kids, taking care of my wife, that jazzes me up. And that makes so much more resonance in my life and passion, that brings so much passion in my life. That little adversity that we all have to face is just no comparison. Because I could never look into the face of my kids or my wife or people that, like you guys, my PATH students and my rock stars, and say, fuck you. I'm not doing this. I'm taking a break. I'm not going to be here for you. I can't do that. I can't. And I suspect that there are people and circumstances and things in your life that matter to you a whole lot. Whether it's the loved ones, your family, your friends, or just yourself. When you do this for yourself. But you got to do it. And I know you can. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be listening to me. There are other people who will be, who will be uh, blowing smoke up your ass and making you feel good and trying to sell you some bullshit. That's not what we do here. This is not an easy business. I'm the first one to tell you. This is by no means easy. What you sign up for, uh-uh, not easy. But it can be extremely profitable, and it can be extremely fun once you hit the stride. Once you're at the point where if you have three listing appointments in one week lined up and one cancels, all you're like, well, no big deal. I got two more. But if it's the only appointment in 30 days, oh, very different. That's what I want to help you with. Cool? All right, guys. All right. Sandra says, yes. <laughs> I like this. Louis says, King Kong is my drunken monkey, by the way. That's a big freaking monkey, but you can still get it under control, Louis. Patrick says, I'm grinding my way back since the first of the year, and it's starting to pay off again only now. See, Patrick, but it does take, it does take this amount of time right here. So you're here, you're going to start seeing results about 90 days from now. Now, if you really hustle, I know you do, man. You're a hardest working, door knocking, monster, rock star agent in Vegas. Your competition should be shaking. You might accelerate it. You might shorten this. It's possible. The intensity of your beliefs, that then result in intensity of your action and your focus, will determine how far this will be and how soon and how big the results will be. That's the secret. That is the secret. After my good man, he's going door knocking. Look at that, going door knocking right after this. God save the homeowners. <laughs> I like that. That is true. My mind was fucked in the fourth quarter. I had some great closings about paying price now. That's how it is. I totally understand that. Patrick says, I can vouch for the 90-day cycle. You and me and everybody else. Iris says, it makes sense. Oh, this is a good question. Annie has a really good question. A FISBO asked me why I'm helping him with the sale of his house by giving him tips. What do you answer when he asks me? Very good question. You know what I encourage you to do, guys, always is be helpful to for sale by owners. It is the fastest, easiest ways to convert them. You watched my interview with FISBO, CEO of FISBO. Huge site, 90,000 for sale by owners. They say 70% list with an agent. So it's a gold mine. You think FISBO sell on their own? Some do, very small percentage. Seven out of 10 end up listing according to FISBO. That's huge. So the approach I teach you is the no resistance, be cool, be kind, be helpful approach. It is by far, for me at least, most effective. Being a salesy, manipulative salesman never worked for me. Fuck that. I don't know how to teach it. I don't know how to do it. I don't want to. You know why? The golden rule. I don't want other people to manipulate me and sell me shit and manipulate me with some scripts. 
and be assholes to me. That's how I believe that if you're kind to others, they will be kind back. So with that, in my system, Fisborino, I teach you be cool to people, be helpful, come from contribution from the heart. But some Fisborinos will go, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-uh, I decline a minute bit. Why are you doing this? They get suspicious. You know why they get suspicious? Because other agents pretend to be kind, pretend to be nice. It's a fakery just to manipulate them to get the listing. People see through it. You can tell when somebody tries to pull a fast one on you, can't you? When somebody's trying to be really cool and really nice, but deep inside you kind of suspect they have an agenda. See, these people for sale by owners have been beat up by so many agents by the time you show up. They have no reason to believe you or trust you. So what they really question is your trust and your, uh, what are your intentions. So they have the right to feel they do. Give them that right. Be cool with that. Here is how you handle it. First, be really authentic. You cannot pretend this shit. If you're really deep inside, just like, I don't give a shit about you. I hope you drop dead. But first, give me the listing. Let's sell the sucker. Then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's going to be obvious. You know what I mean? You cannot hide that enough. They're going to see through it. So be authentic. Now, the way you're going to be authentic is like this. Let's say you have 12 for sale by owners lined up. Okay? You meet with 12 of them, you have a chat with them, and you decide out of those 12, you want to keep 10. Two, jump in a lake. No good. Idiots. Not motivated or just difficult assholes. Although there, be careful, because many times it's a cover-up. It's just to protect themselves. But whatever. You keep 10. Out of those 10, you're going to put on follow-up. Maybe one, maybe two will sell on their own. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe three will list with somebody else. That hurts and sucks, and I always get pissed off when I lose a listing like that. But let's say you end up with three or four who are very good candidates to becoming your listings. That's possible. I can tell you what you're going to end up with. Of course, your numbers will be different because it's your skill, your, your abilities, your persistence, your follow-up. All these factors will influence on your results, and I can't promise you results. But my expectation would be out of 12 I put on a system, there's got to be at least two or three good listings in there. That's what I would expect. And if not, I would tweak the system because something is broken. So how do you get through them to show them that you are genuinely interested in the best outcome? First, don't be attached to the outcome. If they sell on their own, great. They saved money from their perspective. That's ideal. That's perfect. That's what they want. If they list with somebody else, figure out what was it about the other agent. There must have been something that they liked more. There was more trust. There was more communication, better tools, something. Those that stay with you, you're not attached to the outcome, you come from genuine contribution. Here is how you explain. You tell them, Susan, that's a really good question. And you may be questioning, well, why in the world would I like to work for free? Here is why. I believe that what goes around, what comes around goes around. What goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. If I'm cool and helpful to you, maybe down the road, things don't work out, you decide it's time for plan B, time to interview some agents, I'd be happy to sit down with you and chat. Or maybe you sell on your own. Fantastic. I've done my job. My job is to help people. See, I'm not worried about money. Money will come. Money will flow. There are plenty of people who need my help. Some pay me, some don't. It's all right. Maybe you'll buy a house down the road from me. Maybe you refer somebody else from me. It's going to come back to me. I just feel like if I'm nice and cool and helpful to other people, I get rewarded for it. So I'm here to help. What questions can I answer? What tools can I give you? What would make your job easier to getting it sold on your own? That's it. But here's the trick, you got to believe it yourself. Because if you still live in that mindset of scarcity, if you believe there's not enough, sellers are assholes, they don't want to pay me, there's not enough money, not enough deals, too many agents, if you're really holding on to those beliefs, you're going to find enough evidence to support those beliefs. Because any belief that you hold to be true is true for you. And the universe will line up enough evidence to support these beliefs, not what you want. So going back to the mindset, start thinking, Fizzballs need me? There are plenty of nice sellers out there, plenty of business, way more business than I can possibly handle, and tons of money to be made. You go in with that, if somebody does do something other than what you intended to do, it's no big deal. Here's the coolest thing about Fizzbos. There'll be plenty more tomorrow. There'll be another one tomorrow, and another one the day after, and another one the day after. So you have tons of resources and tons of opportunities. The trick is to feed them good information, be really cool and genuinely helpful, and just stay with them because you're going to hear a lot of noise. You're going to hear things like, we already have an agent. We definitely will never list. We have plenty of buyers. We're going to do this on our own. This is just a noise. This is just brushes. This is just their expression of 
we don't trust you. Or we feel like we don't need you, which is fine. From their point of view, again, look at it from their perspective. They have a lovely home. Market is pretty hot right now in most part of the country. So they feel like we can get this done on our own. They don't know the statistics. They don't understand the complexity of this business. And they don't understand how dangerous and scary and bad it is to sell on your own. But that's not something you can sell them on. That's something they need to experience. See, the theme today is my son. Now, <laughs> there are things that I know will hurt him. There are things I know he's going to get smacked by life. There are things I know is a bad idea. And as a parent, I would love to just tell him, no, 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 don't, don't say that, don't do that, don't go there. And for those of you guys who have parents, you know, who have kids, you know what I'm talking about. But there are times where there's nothing I can do. There are times where I know the best lesson and the only lesson he needs to get right now is actually go through an experience, do something dumb, and then come back and maybe tell me, hey, Papa, you were right. And sometimes he doesn't, sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> but I still know he got the lesson. It's the same thing with for sale by owners. They need to spend a little bit of time on the market really doing it and trying it themselves. Because it's one thing if you tell them, dude, you're going to get a lot of investors, a lot of crooks, a lot of uh, idiots looking for a bargain, people who buy those late night infomercial courses, how to get rich in real estate. Those are the kind of people that will approach you. It's one thing if you tell them that. It's something else if 10 of them call within a week. Very different experience. Same thing, different experience. So you simply become their companion on this journey, connecting with them, communicating with them. Every seven to 10 days, you have a little conversation with them while you offer something helpful. There are about 20, 21 different things in the Fisborino system. By the way, if you want the Fisborino, you can get it for free. It's part of the path. So if you go to goborino.com, goborino.com, check out the path. It's a great monthly coaching program where one by one, you get all of my systems, including the Fisborino. So you simply walk with them on this path. You hold their hand, you guide them, you answer their questions. And at one point, they simply realize it's too much. It's too complicated. Because if you look at the statistics, only 8% of the homes in the United States sold last year were for sale by owners. So the stories you hear and stories many believe that many Fisbo sell on their own are simply not true. Statist there are no statistics that support that. There is no data that supports that. All the data points to real estate agents, which is a good news for you, right? So that's the secret. You simply explain, I'm here to help. If I get paid, fantastic. If you decide to interview agents, some sellers do. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, doesn't matter. I'm here to help. Maybe you can refer me some buyers. I'll send buyers your way. We'll help each other out. It's fine. See, if you don't have a problem with it, if you don't hide the agenda, they will either. They will not either. That's how it works. All right? So Annie, I hope that was helpful. Iris says, that makes perfect sense. Good. Cool. Dave says, I have door knocked 2,500 homes since January 2nd. I have created 16 leads for summer sale. Fantastic, Dave. Look at you. Very nice. Rough week, but bounce back today with two under contract and another listing. Danthika. That is awesome. Congratulations, girl. Excellent. Fadi says, on my way to FISBO listing. Thanks, Borino, for the amazing help. Fadi, go get him. Sandra says, getting a lot of hard-headed FISBOs. They can't sell their home, but I am being nice and saying, okay. So I guess I will check back with them and see if they have sold it yet. Sandra, you got to keep in touch. That's one of the secrets to for sale by owners is continuous follow-up. And it's not a follow-up, hey, just wanted to see if you're ready to list yet. Don't do that. No, what else can I do to help? Would you like me to help you put a flyer together? Would you like me to help you with an ad on Craigslist? How about I walk you through a good open house? There's tons of things you can offer. But if you do it genuinely, they will pick up on it. Here's the secret. Most of those Facebooks won't do shit. They won't. They won't do a video, nice property photos, an open house, a Zillow ad, a, a Craigslist ad. They won't do that. On the contrary, they will start to realize, shit, that's a lot of work. But every week you offer something, being helpful, being cool, being encouraging, offering market updates, what's going on in the neighborhood. The only two things you never discuss with a for sale by owner until the listing presentation is your commission and the actual price of the house. That's reserved for your clients. Other than that, go to town with them. They will love it. 
Ricky says, I challenge every agent watching this because he's giving us no bullshit. Let's show that we believe so. 15 deals in 90 days. Way to go. That's what I'm talking about, Ricky. And he says, yes, that makes sense. Wonderful. Louis says, this is great. Well, thank you. Mita, hey Mita, what's going on? Another rock star student. You're in PATH, right, Mita? Marino, do you think sending to Fizzballs uh, about statistic mentioning only 8% Fizzball sells by themselves planting negative feeling needs seeds in their mind? No, I don't think it's a good idea. And I tell you why, Mita. We have this part of our brain called reticular activator, RAS, reticular activator system. I talk about it in the first book of PATH. Uh, the first book you got. Remember I talked about the RAS, about the car I bought for Hannah for her birthday, the sports car. There's a part in our brain that works like a filter. If you start thinking, dreaming, hoping, talking, considering something, let's say a car, a certain model and a make and a color, they start showing up in your world. Has it ever happened to you? Like you buy a car or you think about buying a car and suddenly that white Mercedes is everywhere, right? It's not like magically somebody ran into the Mercedes dealership because they had, they had two for one special and bought a bunch of them. It is your reticular activator, which is a filter in your brain that starts paying attention and noticing. It is same in reverse. If the for sale by owner deep inside has a deep planet thought that they're going to do it on their own, that they can do this, any information to the contrary will not only be discarded, but it will be considered as an opposing view from somebody who wants something, who has a different agenda that is not aligned with their goals. So I would not do that at all. On contrary, I would tell them, look, John, if you can do this on your own, that's awesome. You're going to save, what, $8,000 in commission? More power to you. I would do the same. I mean, think about it this way, guys. If you had option A and you had option B, same thing, both. You can buy the same car. Let's say it's a GL450, since we're talking Mercedes now. GL450, the new one sell for about $75,000. And you can get the same GL for 50 for $65,000. Same year, same model, same everything. Wouldn't you take the 65,000? I would. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're doing. They believe it makes perfect sense. Everybody should be doing it. And people who are listing with agents are stupid. So the moment you try to convince them, pressure them, here's what's going to happen. You have the idea of the statistic. You start pushing, you're going to get resistance. That's the last thing you want. Now, there's a time and place for it during your listing presentation if these things come up. You can discuss it with the seller. But by then, you have enough trust and connection built. So you're on the same page. You're on the same team. That's the feeling and the connection and the type of relationship you need to establish first. Not a salesperson versus the seller. Bam! We're in this together. We are a team. And we have the same goal, to get this property sold, put as much cash in your pocket as possible, make it happen quickly, and make it as painless as possible. It's a very different thing. All right. Mita says, yes, I'm a past student and I loved it. Good. Bob has a good comment. Check this out. Borino, while door knocking yesterday, a woman actually said, yes, we're going to sell our house. She said they have an agent in another city about 20 miles away, but I could not remember his name. I said, wouldn't it be nice to work with an agent that lives in the neighborhood, and I gave her my card, excellent, said it doesn't work, work out, I'd love the opportunity to help her, she said the other agent specializes in seniors, which is why she wants to use him, I didn't tell her that I also specialize in seniors, I'm an SRES, because I realized that it would start to sound desperate, I sent her a send out cards with two brownies, which she should get in three to four days, any suggestion for follow-up, I would definitely follow up, Bob, first of all, Congrats on getting that lead. Here is my general rule. Until and unless they list with another agent, it's game on. I would treat this seller just like a hot lead that wants to list with me. My basic assumption is I am the best choice for them. Now, of course, you cannot just come and say, I am your best choice. What the fuck is wrong with you? List with me. <laughs> you can't do that. But I would treat it as a hot lead. So the angle I would offer is I totally appreciate you like the other agent. And really, this business is based on you need to like them and trust them and respect them and feel comfortable working with them. So if you have that relationship, I'm not here to destroy it or try to convince you otherwise. But here's what I would suggest. It is not a bad idea to talk to more than one. If nothing else, it will confirm that the other agent is the best choice, which it seems that way. But what if it's not? What if there would be somebody out there who could put a little more extra cash in your pocket? 
or make the transaction smoother for you, or just was a better choice. So why don't we sit down for 20, 30 minutes. If nothing else, I'll show you how I get my listing sold, how I home, how I help the senior citizens like you make sure this process is painless and is as less, as minimize the stress level that we encounter, you know, when you're selling your house. Then you decide. If nothing else, you will get some ideas. You can pass them along to the other agent. Not to mention, she's out of the area. That may potentially be a problem. I would discuss it with her. But why don't we sit down and chat? See what I did there? Nice and easy. So I would keep in touch, I would follow up, offer helpful, cool tips, let them know what's going on in the neighborhood, take it from there. Now, another option you can, I mean, you have several options here. I would definitely not drop them, for sure. Second option would be, why don't we list it together? Why don't your preferred agent and I work on this together and then co-list it or pay her a referral fee? See, I'm a big fan of some money is better than no money. Half a listing is better than no listing, in most cases. Now, of course, there are exceptions to it, but you get my point? You're running a business, and if your business is an opportunity to make some money and help people, go for it, okay? So be creative, definitely don't give up on them. This also requires confidence and high status. My general approach to every single seller and every single client I ever met was, I'm your best choice. I'm the best choice. I was deep inside convinced, and compared to all the other agents out there, I'm a better choice than everybody else. Whether that was true or not didn't matter. Probably in many cases it wasn't true, but you get my point. I really believed that I could get the job done. I cared about my clients deeply, which I did. I knew the market. I knew how to get the job done, and I was kind of fun to work with. And I was a hustler. I worked hard. I still do. I still work my ass off. You know what I mean? I had a high work ethic, and I know most of you do as well. So you have to be convinced I am the best choice, because here's the thing. If you're not convinced, if you deep inside believe there are other agents who are better than me, you're fucked. It's over. It's hard. You're going to convey it indirectly, non-verbally, to that prospect one way or another. Whether it's on the energy level, whether it's non-verbal communication, or you slip or you say something, they're going to pick up on it just like you can pick up on it. Are you with me? So work with these sellers. All of these are indicators of interest. That's a good thing. Work with them. You can convert them. So go get him, Bob. All right. Mita, another good question. Here we go. Borino, while calling all expired, spoke with a one humble lady, and she mentioned that they had listed their house last full year. Now they cannot sell their house because her husband di is diagnosed with cancer. Ooh, bummer. Do you think it would be a good idea to call her and see how her husband's health is going? Not talk about selling how. Absolutely, Mita. I would send her a nice card, like a send out card with some brownies, just to make her feel better. You know, hope your day's going well, thinking of you. Hope your husband is okay. Yeah, definitely. I would nurture that relationship. But you're absolutely right. Your instincts are dead on. You have to be very sensitive about it. Because spouse's health like that, remember what I talked about earlier your health, your money, and your relationships that's a huge source of stress. So to go through shit like that is no joke. So if you do this delicately, from the heart, with compassion, you can gain a tremendous client. You can absolutely rock that. Okay? Yeah. I wanted to show you something, guys. You want to see something? Hold on. Let me get it. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I think I have it here. Hang on. Bear with me. Where is the box? I must have put it away. All right. I'll show you on the next live. I thought I had it here, but I don't. I wonder where I put it. Next time. All right, my friends. Mita says, thank you very much. My pleasure. I'm glad it was helpful. All right, guys. Good session today. Did you have a good time? So we have a couple of opportunities to work together. You can come do the path with me. I'd love to have you on board. We have a great bunch, a private group. And we're like, you know, warriors working together. You get all my systems, I will coach you, I will help you. We have these live sessions where we work together live online. You can ask questions, we role play, we do all kinds of cool stuff. I want to make sure you get a lot of business. That's one. Two, of course, I'll be in San Diego on 26, June 26, um, uh, with Tristan and Nick and a bunch of cool people doing the Lab Codes Live, which will be pretty awesome, just like the last one, that was pretty cool. So I had the privilege, I was asked, and I really am honored that I was asked to host it. So I'll be your MC for the three days, so we'll hang out by the pool and have some cocktails and learn some cool stuff and brainstorm and mastermind. And then, 
in September, this is going to be really good. I call it the Barino War Room, which is I will interview personally 10 of you. You will apply, and then you will fly here to Washington, D.C., and you and I will work together for 10 days, uh, for two days. 10 people, two days. We're going to lock ourselves in this beautiful high tech war room, literally, room where a lot of big government brass has these super secret meetings that Roseanne, thumbs up, found. And for two days, we're going to work very intensely on your mindset, on your business, on your planning, or anything else. We're going to literally take your entire business apart and put it back together. We're going to mastermind. We're going to have breakfast together. We're going to have lunch together. We're going to go out and have a fun dinner together, or maybe a glass of wine or two. <laughs> and we're going to spend very two very intense days together. So if you're curious about it, you can email me, borino at xparkplus.com. It's going to be strictly a pre-screening process where I will personally get on the phone with you, ask you some questions about your business. It's going to be $2,000 for the program, and I will cut it off at 10 people. So there'll be only 10 of us in the room exchanging ideas. I'll be answering your questions, whatever you need the most to get you to your goal. Now, with that said, this will not be for beginners. So if you're just starting out, if you're new in the business, if you're just getting to your first or second deal, this is definitely not for you. But uh, the path may be a much better choice. But if you want to work with me personally, I would be thrilled to spend a couple of days with you and work on your business. This is the closest you're going to get from one to a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Barino, and I'm really excited about it. It's been a long time I prepped this. I know you've been asking for a long time, and I was dragging my feet putting it together, but I finally figured out how we're going to make it work. So you're going to walk away inspired and well-educated and prepared to really tackle the business big time. Now, you can turn it into a family trip. We'll be very close to the White House, to the Washington, D.C. downtown, so you can turn it into a fun trip. So this is going to be sometime mid-September. That's what we're shooting for. Okay? So we'd love to have you. We'd like to hang out with you. Okay. Lily says, I got the book. Where is it? All right, good. Lily says, you rock. Well, thank you, Lily. Appreciate it. Thanks, Marino. Genuine, as always, says, Lewis, I got the book Awakening the Giant Within. Great lecture. Thank you. Great book by Tony Robbins. Definitely recommend it. Sandra likes the idea of coming here to D.C. The path, please. Yeah, Lily. Oh, the path? The path is goborino.com. Are you on it, Lily? I'm not sure if you are or not. I think you are, right? All right, my friends. When do those applications come out? Uh, applications. Oh, for the personal training, for my personal training, the war room, we will have it ready within about two weeks. Roseanne, as a matter of fact, today is going to that corporate building where we're going to hold it to check out the place, uh, meet with the manager, and sign up the contract. So once we have the signed contract, I will let you know. There will be an application you're going to get from me. You're going to fill it out. You'll tell me about your business, your goals, and all that. And uh, if I feel like you're a good fit, we're going to get on the phone for about 15 minutes. You can ask me all kinds of questions. I will have questions about you and your business to make sure, because I'm, I'm sure we're going to sell it out, and I want to make sure the 10 people that I select are the right match, that you will really walk away with what you expect to get out of it and really get that boost in your business. Cool? So expect it, I would say, within probably a week or two. So we can start planning, because it involves some travel, and there are some nice hotels in that area, and uh, I would love to see you. Okay? Excelente. Damari says, I am a PATH member and I love it. I'm super motivated by it. Hey, Deborah, what's going on? Damari says, I'm, I'm really thrilled you're enjoying it. That's a program that I spend months and months and months planning and working on to make sure you get tons of value after, out of it, to make sure you can be on track to your 50 listings in 50 weeks. And maybe you say that's too much. Maybe you say, I don't need that. I'll be happy with half. That's cool. There's no right or wrong. But I want to challenge you. I want to push you. I want to inspire you. And all the tools that are available as part of the path are part of that. Groovy? So I don't want to turn this into a big sales pitch. I'm just excited about the path. And I'm excited about the results you guys are already seeing. Like, Derek, what did you get, Derek? 12 listings in a week? Wasn't that some crazy number like that? <laughs> you, Jessica, day before vacation landed, like two listing appointments. Crazy, crazy results, which is fantastic. I'm really inspired and jazzed by the results you're getting. So if you're curious about it, go to goborindo.com. Check it out. Register for it. We'll ship you a big box. You're going to get a bunch of books from me in the process, live sessions, hot seat sessions, Q&As, and all the good stuff. All right. Time well spent today. Was that good? Oh, Jessica, I like that. Jessica's up for now. Yeah, baby! Got another listing. Well done. Well done.
and four closings today, right before vacation. Check you out. You are on fire. We're going to rename her to Jessica El Fuego. Well done, my PATH students. Well done. We're going to have a good session coming up as well. And I posted that track for you, that meditation visualization track called the Open Road. It's already posted. You probably got the email from me earlier today. All right, my friends, good session today. I really enjoyed it. Next, we're going to have a lot of fun. Shana is coming on board to tell us some cool stuff they do. She's in a super competitive, super hot, very challenging market in Northern California. And they're doing something cool with open houses and getting some pretty cool results. So I'm going to have a little chat with her next Tuesday. She's going to answer your questions, how they do stuff, and how you can, even in a very competitive market, even in a very difficult buyer's market, where the uh, seller's market, still crush it and get listings and get business. So I'm really excited about that. Shane always has tons of good insights because she's a working agent, successful agent. She's not just some theory bullshit that she learned 30 years ago. So it's going to be good. Join us here again, same place, same time, Tuesday, noon. Be here. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Coach Borino signing off. I have a very important errand to run. There's a new bike. new. It's called Transcontinental Tourer. Picture your living room on two wheels. <laughs> That's about the, the gist of the bike. It's a phenomenal new, brand new motorcycle. And I'm going to go take a look at it this afternoon. So I'll report back to you. All right, my friends. Have a fantastic rest of the day. I really enjoy chatting with you. I'm having a great time doing these for you. Keep coming back. Join me again. Go out there, get some leads, get some listings, help some clients. They need your help. This is a great time to be in real estate, and I'm glad I'm part of your business. Ask questions. Ask for help if you need. Thanks very much. Talk to you real soon. Go get it. Bye, everybody.